Okay, we're recording now. Now let's go out on Facebook, and uh, I think we should be ready to go here. There we go. It says uh, your meeting is now being live streamed. Hi, everybody is watching us on uh, Facebook. That's where it would be. Okay. How are you? Hope you all had a nice uh, Thanksgiving. And boy, we got a whole bunch of people waiting to come on here. So let me get them all on here now as I hit admit all. There they go. There's Marjorie Miller. I know her. Uh, there's Charlene Solis. I know her. I know uh, our good friend Andrew Deutsch and Paul Eleven and Edward Berger. And Lance. That's right. And uh, yeah. Hello, everybody. How are you? Good, good. <clears throat> you all have a nice Thanksgiving? I'm still gobbling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As only you could. That's right. <laughs> we, we, yeah, yeah. It sounds like a gobble to us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, Charlene, uh, did you have a nice uh, Thanksgiving? Yeah. Had a great day. Yeah. A great family day. What, what'd you do? The family all? It, yeah. We, yeah. my daughter in law, well, I helped her. She mostly did the cooking, and my, all my kids were here, my grandkids. We just had a really, really good day. Wow. How the about turkey you? turned out really good too. <laughs> oh, of course. Although sometimes you can, it can turn out bad and then you've ruined your whole Thanksgiving. You know? <laughs> then uh, you eat the sides. <laughs> well, sometimes you get a turkey that's lived hard, you know. And, uh, <laughs> well, I think it was last year when Marjorie went out and had to at the last minute find a turkey because uh, what was the company that didn't deliver us our turkey? The chickens went crazy. Yeah, well, anyway. So over 2,000 dinners were never sent. Were never sent. So she had to go down and get like the last turkey at a, at, at, at a grocery store and that turkey uh, had lived a hard life. It was the <laughs> bottom of the barrel. It was the hardest. It was the hardest turkey I ever had to cut into. I remember it. It was like I was getting a cramp in my hand, which I'm getting a lot lately, and that, that really helped. But anyway. Was it going caw, caw instead of gobble, gobble? Yeah, kind of. It was, <laughs> it was, crows are delicious. It was actually roaring at me. Uh, how, how, how was your Thanksgiving, Andrew? It was nice. Uh, fortunately, I planned ahead because the oven door didn't get completely closed. So the first hour it was supposed to be cooking, it was not. But oh. uh, Everything else went perfect. Well, there's a certain amount of cooking it did. Yeah, at 150, which is the sort of preheat. Oh, I see. Because the sensor, the sensor on the door is not closed. Well, well, it came out perfect anyhow. We just ate a little bit. I later. wonder if you take a turkey and say, cook it at 150 for like 12 hours. That's, <laughs> how, you, that's how you smoke it. Well, will it turn out better? Oh, yeah. If when I, when I do a turkey in the smoker, I do it around 200 for five or six hours. Really? When I put it in the oven. Oh, that must be delicious out of a smoke it is, it is. Yeah. Well, one year i ended up with two turkeys so we smoked one and we cooked the other one uh in the I, oven the regular way the other the other way of course it's supposed to be terrific is is uh is uh, uh, uh deep fat frying it yeah the you guys know. who sell driveways like that because they end up replacing them after the idiot puts a frozen one in there <laughs> burn, burn a big hole in your driveway oh oh yeah no you don't want to do that but i mean uh, a hole so deep I, I, I know people that do it and they actually have now um things you can do it in that you won't burn yourself i mean they've got a whole system well, the accidents happen because people throw frozen birds in they're not completely thought really that's I didn't know that. that's one of the main the main causes of those stupid videos you see is somebody <laughs> throwing a frozen one in there and uh, of course, uh, Paula, what did you do? You guess you went to your children, kids' homes or something. I, I did. We had uh, all the usual stuff, all the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, and and were the the grandkids there and stuff like that? Uh, uh, half of the grandkids, so the, the other half I'll see on Christmas. You'll see on Christmas. How old are the grandkids now? I have a uh, oh, one is twenty four. One is oh 16. god, <laughs> with the babies. Yeah, uh, one is sixteen, and the youngest one. I only have three, but they're all wonderful. And the youngest one is eleven, going on thirty five. <laughs> you know, she's uh, she's quite a thing, but uh, she's going on twelve. Yeah. Wow, but that you know that isn't that amazing when you think about that you've got a twenty four year old grandchild. I don't believe it, but you know, yeah. 
It's, my business it's, manager. It is indeed so. <laughs> my business manager, who's now, I guess Gary's maybe 96 or something like that. 86. No, 86, excuse me. <laughs> is a great grandfather like two or three times over yeah my oldest grandkid's 14 really yeah son of a bitch make you feel old he's not a son of a bitch he's a nice kid no <laughs> how dare you <laughs> well, i never liked him never liked him anyway uh uh but boy a, a terrific you know and 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 uh <laughs> I'm afraid to ask what uh, where uh, Edward went. Where did you go, Edward? Uh, my niece. Your niece. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've never had any kids. No. Nope. And, and, and nobody to pass that wonderful voice on to. Huh? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, and and what, what, was the turkey good? Yeah. 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 Nobody ever says they had a lousy turkey because even if they had a lousy turkey, that would ruin their memory of a nice Thanksgiving. So you never say you had a lousy turkey. Uh, 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 how about how about you, uh, Len? I went to some friend's house, had a lovely turkey, and watched the 49ers kick some ass. Oh, <laughs> really? Me too. Yeah, pay. The Cowboys did good, and of course, where's Brian? I, I thought I thought they played football. I didn't know they kicked ass. <laughs> <laughs> they take names too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you sure it was an ass and not a donkey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now over to Mandy. Where did you go, Mandy? Hello, Mandy. Hello. Yeah. I went to Pittsburgh. You went to Pittsburgh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and who was there? Um, it was um, my friend, you know, my friend, mm -hmm. and we went to his brother's house, and his girlfriend was there, mm. and he made a prime rib, and we had all kinds of other good mm. food. You know, uh, you don't have to make a turkey, no. and a prime yeah, rib is look. certainly quite acceptable. Yeah, you know, uh, but you can make a ham, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you can make what else? What well? What else is a substitute for turkey? It's not a substitute. It's just another dish. Yeah, yeah. And finally, of course, I'm not going to even ask Charlie because I know what the <laughs> answer is. You sat at home and watched football, right? Oh, I had a great weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? There were so many football games. Oh, ah. I see. Okay, so you just, it didn't go anywhere. No, no. What what did you have for dinner? <laughs> I had turkey. I just ordered out for turkey, but I had turkey. Ordered out for turkey. Yeah. Marjorie has announced to me that this was her last Thanksgiving that she's going to do. Put me in bed for three days. My back is. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll just do it next year. I need. To, hey, I'm not even going to be in the house. I'm going out. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You can just you can eat my turkey, can't you? No, going out. Go to Charlie's. I'm going out. I'm not going to eat your, your turkey. I got no problem with that. <laughs> you're going over to Charlie's. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, you're just it, it really it really did exhaust you. You know, and that's that's kind of but I. I would miss you not hosting Thanksgiving. I can't. It's just too much for me now. How many people do theirs ahead of time? Like, we got there on Tuesday afternoon, and his brother had already started cooking, and he cooked on Wednesday. And wow. his girlfriend, most yeah. of them, they, so they just had to just do some little finishing touches. And he cooked, of course, because he wanted everything done so the oven would be freed up for the prime rib. For the what? For the prime rib. Oh, for the prime rib. I see. Yeah, oh, he didn't want any of those casseroles and taking up space. Oh, so he oven. made a turkey. No, he didn't make a turkey. He, he made make, prime rib. He made the prime rib. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how long did the prime rib take to cook? Hours. I wasn't. He got up really early to start it. Do you, anybody know how long it takes to do a prime rib of that? You're not bad. It's but, like, uh, it, uh, it depends on what temperature. How big it is. How tender you want it. Because I've done. Yeah, he was going to do a 15 pound. <laughs> We were like, you. There's only five of us. You can do a seven. He had a seven pound one. Hold on a second. How much would a fifteen pound prime rib cost these days? 
Well, $200. Safely has them on safely has them on sale at Christmas time for like five ninety nine or six ninety nine a pound. So they're you know it's like seventy eighty bucks. Really, bad. that's not bad. That's not terrible. You know, but all I know is I haven't had a, been in a situation where I've seen you know, how bad things have gotten financially. I mean, money wise, when you go out to buy stuff and we went out to eat yesterday at a restaurant we go to all the time for brunch. OK, now this is brunch. There were four of us. How much do you think it came to? For brunch? Mm -hmm. and it was a it was, it was we had simple stuff you had what marjorie you had steak and eggs steak and eggs and you always know the steak they give you with steak and eggs is it, it's lived a hard life okay uh but how much do you think it costs for four like 100 bucks huh? 120, like 100 bucks 100 bucks for the four of us yeah what, what, anybody else Two hundred. Well, four, 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 i'm saying a bucket of four <laughs> Yeah. Try five hundred and twelve dollars. No, oh, come on. Excuse me. Four hundred. <clears throat> Go into the city. I mean, like Manhattan. Excuse come me. Four hundred. Four hundred and twelve dollars. Were you like in Man like in oh. really? Where the heck did you go? Let me. Let Man, me. Did I never leave Manhattan. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Yeah, but listen to me now. Uh, just alone, Mar Marjorie and her friend. Carlos's fiance, Mary Ellen. Well, no, but I'm saying that when it came to the uh, wine, which was what wine did you get? It wasn't wine. It was. It oh, was, it, oh um, it was. Uh, yeah, it was mimosas. Uh, mimosas. mimosas. Now, you and I all know that the mimosas are the the suckers bet in any restaurant, right? <laughs> yeah. Because it's uh, it's this much orange juice. And this much champagne, my you know, mm -hmm. champagne. All right, uh, and uh, that alone for the two of them came to seventy five dollars. That doesn't make any sense, huh? That, that doesn't make, doesn't make any sense. What? What? Where did you go? For heaven's sake! Well, tell them how many glasses of wine between the two of you you bought. Mimosas, you mean? Mimosas. Yeah. I don't know. They weren't bottomless, huh? No, no. Uh, wasn't one of these things where you All get the other places lunch. are bottomless. Yeah, wow, it ruins the fun if you got to keep track. But right. I mean, all, of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm sitting there amazed at, at how much it came to because he handed me we, we split between two cards and they handed me the bill. And I went, Oh, this is the bill for the two of us. No, it was the bill for me. <laughs> Which wasn't, or that was like 200 some odd dollars plus the tip. And your wow. point is? And my point is, wow, it's expensive out there. I am, I end my case here. Yeah. Right. Is that, is that like typical of places to go for brunch where you drop so much money? No. Not in Austin. I'm never going there again for brunch because I got another place that's got just as good a brunch that's half that price. You know, for the for four people, okay, give it four people, and two of them are absolute lushes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think well, everywhere is expensive, but I mean, definitely New York. I was just on the phone with my kid last night for thirty minutes with her, yeah. just because she's moving in December, and so she's like, "It's going to be this much, and this broker fee, and this fee, and this deposit, and this." Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, all yeah. kinds of. stuff. The, you've got a broker's fee here in New York. You can't mm -hmm. just if you answer an ad in the in the newspaper or whatever, it's going to be a broker, and they're going to take what fifteen percent, something like that. I think it's yeah, it was a lot. Yeah, how much did yeah. we pay, Marjorie? We paid fifteen percent, didn't we? Yeah, something. Each side pays a portion, and then you got a security deposit, and you got this and that, and like a you call it a um. A thing just to even get approved, but you get it back immediately as soon as you're approved. It's some kind of like reservation type fee. Oh, a fee, a processing fee. Yeah. 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 Oh boy. You know, it's just, it's just, it, you can't afford to live in New York anymore. I'll tell you that right now. How, how much her rent? I don't even want to say how much her rent is for this apartment. Huh? For her, I mean, five or six 
thousand dollar house in Atlanta for that. Mm. Yeah. What? What did? What, how much is her rent? New rent going to be? Going to be over four thousand. She's got a roommate. She's not having to pay as much. But I know. I know. You, you know. We watch this guy on uh, on YouTube who goes Cash on, Jordan. To, yeah, Cash Jordan who goes on tours of apartment houses and oh, yeah. what you can get for how much the bottom of the barrel apartments, you know, and, and they're always saying, well, this is only thousand dollars a person because, yeah. they, Hey, it's a three bedroom. Therefore, blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah. I mean, there were like eight or nine of them yeah. and decided on the one they are getting. I mean, it's really nice though. She's so, I mean, how many people are going to be in there with her? Two. It's a oh, two bedroom two. her and her roommate, her new roommate. Yeah, but I mean, it 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 it's going to cost her what a thousand at least a two, couple thousand a month. Uh, not quite that much because she said this person, she called her an angel sent from above. Mm -hmm. It's like her coworker's friend, and they said it's my angel sent from above because she's going to pay more than she's having to pay. She probably gets the best room, is what she gets. Yeah, this, I think the room she showed me like a video that she took of it, and mm -hmm. the other room's slightly bigger. And how, do, how does it look? Is it big? Oh, it's so great. I mean, I feel like the living area is not as big as the one she has now, but the bedroom. Where is but, it, Mandy? Huh? Where is it? Tribeca. Oh, well, that's expensive area. That's a I very know. expensive area. If she went to Brooklyn, it would be cheaper. You know. I, I'm trying to think where our boyfriend's moving there at the beginning of the month, and he's going to be like on the other side, like West side, she's whatever side it is. I'm not sure, yeah. but, but like even, but yeah. if telling her, she was trying to figure out how to get there to see him on the train. And it was telling her to go all the way to Brooklyn and then go back up. <laughs> like, why would it tell me to go to Brooklyn? Like, I don't know. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. But anyways, that's that easier. Yeah. So is it expensive out where, where, uh, where you live, Edward? Uh, for rent, I don't know because I don't rent. I, mean, I just leave it on my own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do you, do you own your house? Well, I got it from my mother. She owned it, and uh, after oh. she passed away, goes to me. Oh, goes to. Oh, you. he pays his taxes then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That property tax. <laughs> Our property tax. Oh, high, high. That's about uh, ten thousand. What a year. Yeah. <laughs> no, a month. No, no, it's a year. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, that's kind of like paying a very cheap rent in man. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, uh in, in our case, I mean, we're still have we're still paying ridiculous amount of money, five hundred dollars a month for this apartment. <laughs> Tell how big it is, Mandy. You've been here. Yeah. It's huge. What is it? Twenty cents a square foot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm twenty five hundred square feet. Twenty five hundred. Yeah. For five hundred dollars, is twenty cents a square foot. <laughs> yeah, twenty cents a square that's foot. Okay. <laughs> oh, Jesus, but, that's uh, ridiculous. I mean, the only thing I can think of is at the age of twenty four, she's. I mean, she is concerned about like saving money, but it's apparently these people in this age are not really that concerned about saving for retirement. So they're willing to just throw their money away like well, this. On you know, I mean, if you're going to live in Manhattan, I mean, you know, she's not going to live. Her. It was you always, want a, you have a, want to have a decent place to live yeah. and uh, money probably should be no consideration in that respect. If it's good, not going to break her completely. No, I mean, wanna, she's just, she's not, she just wanted to call in belly ache, but yeah. And obviously it's a choice. She doesn't have to live there. It was just always a, you know, a dream that she wanted to live there. So she's living her best life. Yeah. Well, I remember when I was working at Sirius XM, the, uh, uh, the average salary of a person at Sirius XM, if you don't include Howard Stearns, uh, was like 35,000 a year. Really? In, in what was, year in, was that? This was about uh, 10 years ago. Only 10 years ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, my produce, my, um, uh, what do you call it? Not producer, but what, what was, what was, uh, what's her Albert? name? Albert? No, what's her name? Christina? Yeah, what was her job? She was kind of a, she was a phone screener is what she was. Yes, yeah. But she was making $35,000 a year. Well, I mean, come on, to live in New York? 
I mean, yeah, you can come from New Jersey, but then the cost of coming from New Jersey every day. Yeah. You know. Are you saying are you saying the on air talent was making that as well? The on the air talent, no. Oh, no. okay. Good. I mean, Jeez. at least I wasn't, but they can I think got rid of me because I think they ex consider me expensive. Huh. And I really wasn't, you know. Not compared to Howard. Not compared to Howard, no. <laughs> You know, well, you must have you must have made pretty good money back here in San Francisco. Back well, in San Francisco, I made great money. Yeah, I made a lot. I made fuck you money, basically. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, so you, but, you 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 were the shit out here too. You know, you were the you were the guy everybody listened to. Yeah, <laughs> but but on the other hand, you know, there were there's still well, actually, I think I was about the second highest paid broadcaster in San Francisco. Let me guess, Ron Owens. I don't, I don't, I don't know whether he made more than I did. Mm. You know, mm. um, but you know, I had a couple of businesses going too. I had all the concerts and stuff that I did, and so on. Right. So you had to right. add that into it, and the station allowed me to do commercials for my shows and not have to pay for them. Okay. And you did the uh, comedy tonight as well, right? Well, the, the TV didn't pay much of anything. I mean, comedy tonight, I made $150 an episode. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> but I get it. Yeah, you know, we can we can laugh at that. Uh, but um, I got paid. What was it? I got paid. I got $150 an episode for comedy uh, for uh, One Night Stand at HBO. Hmm. You think, oh well, you know, okay, 150 bucks. Thank you very much. Not much of a check. And then over the years, you start getting residuals. Right. Because they kept running these things on, on Max and things like that, you know. And I the I, one of the comedians I hated the most of all comedians was Bill Maher because he was a real asshole. Okay. Sure is now. Huh? <laughs> he sure is now. <laughs> I can't even you, watch the show now. It, it, why you can't watch it? No. Why? Because he's almost become a right winger. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, he was a jerk back then. Jerk yeah. now, I understand too. I mean, if, if in those days, hanging around the comedy community, he said, "Who's the biggest jerk in comedy?" Everybody in a chorus would say Bill Maher. <laughs> <laughs> But I have to say, that guy's made me a fortune over the years because they kept running him on HBO Max. Hmm. And so every time another year came up, they ran him. I didn't get a lot of money. But at the end of the it, – it, it's been 20 years, maybe 25 years since we did those shows. I made twenty about $10,000 off just Bill Maher. Hmm. You know? uh, and when all those things were running, I was getting a nice check at the end of the year. You know, So uh, – it, it, it residuals were very good, but when it, when we talk about uh, comedy tonight, which was PBS, uh, not so much. I we I don't think I've seen a check on that in, in years. You know, yeah, they're not running those anymore. I don't see them. Right, you know, but when they were, you know, every year I get another. Those, those shows were great. They were so good. Yeah, yeah, I did that for with Bill Maher. My problem with Bill Maher is he doesn't let people finish their finish their answer before he's ready to start with another question. Yeah, it really annoys me. Yeah, yeah, he he has gotten I think annoying, uh, uh, and I I don't know how long he's going to last. You know what they did over at HBO? There's a show Marjorie turned me on to it about five years ago. I've been watching it since day one. Since day one, it's been on for. What thirty five years at HBO, something like no, that? about twenty twenty six years. That's it. And uh, I've gotten to love the show. And the new Taskmasters at HBO or at, at Max, the Discovery people have decided to cancel it mm. after twenty six seasons, and it was real, real sports, sports with Brian Gumble. Oh yeah, that's really good. Which, yeah. Yes, which well, you've never month is the last. If you've never <laughs> watched that show, I often said it was better than sixty minutes because they did stories that nobody else did. Like last week, this well, sports month, related. they did a story about sports in Ukraine and how yeah. it's almost nothing's it, sports don't exist right now 
I mean, we, you had tennis players coming out of there, and you had the Olympic, uh, you know, medalists uh, coming out of there. Uh, that the country has caused number one all the great sports people to join the army and go fight for their country. But secondly, Russia has gone around bombing and destroying over three hundred sports centers. Yep. So there's virtually no sports left in uh, in uh, Ukraine because of of the war, and yeah. I haven't seen that story anywhere. You know, and so it's that kind of story that they were doing that it even appealed to me as a guy who was not a big sports what? fan. But their stories were about sports, but they had a larger reason for telling the story, and they've canceled the show. Hmm. Why? Yeah. There's no nothing been written on why, you know, but they've just all of a sudden out of a clear blue sky. We didn't imagine they were going to be canceled. You know, the show was, I think, pretty popular. Yeah. But then again, because only one per one or two people here have seen it. <laughs> yeah. You know. uh, but, you know, you can always go. Oh, what are we going to say, Paula? What did they say about what what was the possible motivation for, for the bombing of a, 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 a sports complex? Sports complex? Uh, I have, you know. And demoralized the people. No idea. Yeah. You know, bizarre no idea. You know, there are a lot of things that I question. I mean, I don't, I don't want to get in what's going on in the Middle East, but they gave some statistics about the, you know, the release of the hostages and what Israel gave back, and it was like, you know, so many Palestinian uh, got males and so many Palestinian females and sixteen teenagers. Wait a minute, what were they arrested for? You know, teenagers? I, I would love to have the answer to that one. I just got the scratch in my head, you know. I can say men, okay, they were, you know, the Palestinians who were making trouble. Women, Palestinians who were making trouble. Teen kids? That I don't understand, man. War is a strange thing. I just don't understand it. But anyway... So, um, anyway, so uh, let me see here. What else is happening? Um, uh, outside, well, we got we exhausted. What did you do for Thanksgiving? <laughs> what about me? Yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't ask you, did I? What did you do for Thanksgiving? I ate a lot of food, and then when the 49ers and Cowboys won, I threw it all up. Uh, <laughs> no. But I regained my consciousness last night when the Eagles won. So I'm thinking. Boy, I was thinking they weren't going to do it. Boy. Yeah. So no, it was a, a good help weekend. From the officials. Yeah, I have no idea what they're talking. <laughs> about. Oh, yeah. Don't let me interrupt you. No, but here, uh, but no, like Charlie said, there's a lot of a lot of sports all weekend. So it was pretty fun. Even on like Friday, it was football. It was like crazy. So yeah, so it was a good weekend. Can't believe you're bringing your daughter in. I can't believe bringing her daughter up as an Eagles fan. <laughs> here, here, here's what I hate about sports. You don't understand you Among <laughs> other things, so that uh, is the fact that whenever they have football on CBS, they say, "Well, sixty minutes will start at seven thirty. Yep. This week it didn't start till eight fifteen. It went to overtime. Yeah. 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 It went into overtime. Why yeah, yeah. well, didn't you watch it? You could have. You could have texted me. We could have talked about the game. It was a lot of fun. Uh, really? I I was no. I'm not going to sit there and watch it. <laughs> you know, we were watching a, a fish called Wanda. And going back <laughs> between that and the sixty minutes on yet. Yeah. <laughs> But every week that happens, you know. I agree with you, Alex. That's called a Heidi. You you wait, you agree with me? I'm not, I don't watch sports. I can't. I have no use for it, and it pisses me off. Now I watch sixty minutes the next day on the rerun on uh, the Paramount or one of the Paramount Plus. Yeah, yeah. I watch yep. it there because the the sports overlap over important things. I've never yep. seen a professional sporting event all the way through in my life. Never. Man <laughs> Mandy looks like she wants to say. I just. This just made me think of you because I went to, on the way, we drove to Pittsburgh. So we stopped at the Andy Griffith Museum. What? Wow. 
the Andy Andy Griffith Griffith Museum. Museum. Yeah, I went to the Andy Griffith Museum in Mount Airy, North Carolina, which is basically what they based Mayberry on, was his hometown of Mount Airy, North Carolina. So there's this big museum there. It's it's actually pretty impressive, the collection they have of his stuff, you know, in the show and and his accomplishments, which I, you know, pretty good. But they he had a record and I'm I'm look, I just Googled it. I'm trying to see when it was recorded. Yeah, he, he was a recording artist for Capitol Records. Yeah. And, and it was it's a it's like a monologue, a little cute yeah. little monologue called yeah. What It Was was football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I need yeah. have you ever seen that? I I heard it when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. okay. So you and I just when I when I heard it in the museum, I cracked up laughing. I was like, Oh yeah, because I think I heard it long, long ago. And I said, I need to send this to Alex. So because he always says he doesn't understand the game. Andy Griffith, <laughs> so, Andy Griffith was, he was a kind of a monologist is what he was considered. Mm-hmm. And he was very funny. He was terrific. Yeah. And then he uh, he went and did uh, a Broadway show called No Time for Sergeants. Right. Which, mm-hmm. they right. Then, which they then made into a movie. By the way, he did it on Broadway with an actor at the time called Don Knotts. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, who wound up on the Andy Griffith show. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he, I don't know if it was before he, I think it was before he did the TV show, he did a movie, which it's a, one of the best acting jobs I've ever seen called A Face in the Crowd. Yes. Mm-hmm. In yeah. which he plays the nastiest, mm-hmm. most horrible person you can possibly imagine. And it, he, he's pure, pure evil. Mm-hmm. And, and then he went right back to doing Andy from Mayberry and never went back to that kind of acting. Mm-hmm. It was just a superb acting job. Wow. Um, but yeah, you know, he also did Matlock and he, in the the display of Matlock, it was, it had like, you know, they always have the little blurbs about it, the information. And they said that he was really most proud of Matlock because he was, he produced it. I think he did a little bit of the writing, um, but and he's like one of the rare people to have like starred in two really, you know, starred in, been the main character in two really successful shows. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did they mention a face in the crowd in this museum? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All that was in there. And I was even saying I'd never seen that movie. I had, there's a lot. Who of- was, who was, the, who was the woman who, who played the, the, the leading role in that? Well, there was Lee Remick was in that. She played no. a girl. Oh, uh, uh Patricia Neal. Right, right, yeah. right, yeah. right, 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 right. Patricia yes. Neal. And uh, Walter Matthau is in that picture. Oh, I love Walter Matthau. What? I love Walter Matthau. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Now, is this the one where he plays the murderer, or was that another no, movie? No, he's not a murderer. He's a, he's a, he's a TV, he's, he's a, per, a person that Patricia Neal finds in jail. But he has okay. this wonderful quality about him, so she gives him a local radio show when he gets out of jail. <sighs> She created a monster. Yeah. And she creates a monster, literally becomes a national television personality. And oh, he's, now, he's now helping people get elected to president and things like that. You know, and it's it, in many ways, it's kind of oh wow. It it almost is uh, is is scary in what it's predicting. Okay. It reminds me of Trump. Well, it can remind you of Trump or anybody else like Ronald Reagan, who became president because he had been a media personality. Uh, only this guy is really evil. I mean, he's just a horrible person. You ever seen and, Being uh, There? Huh? The Peter oh. Sellers movie Being There? Yeah. Chancey Gardner? Yeah. That is one of my favorite movies, Andrew. Me too. <laughs> it's on my top top five. Yeah. Similar, except it's the opposite. It's a total uh, so, somewhat mentally not correct guy who lived behind as a son of a gardener and yes all his adulthood and then when the people died he was set out on the street and everyone thinks he's a genius and he's really just a simple person yeah Yeah. sellers Hmm? peter sellers is that really one of the best movies ever made i think yeah i i agree yeah he's a complete simpleton and somehow he becomes very well known um, people think he's brilliant. They think they, he's people brilliant. interpret all kinds of tremendous things from these simple words that he says. Yeah, he's talking about gardening, and they think he's talking about growth and markets. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a great movie, and they end up putting him up for president. Yes. <laughs> One of the greatest final scenes in a movie. I won't ruin it. Oh, I, I agree. Yes. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, it's your homework. 
Yes. Well, I, I remember the ending. It has something to do. It's somewhat biblical, isn't it? Yeah. It's about innocence, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, somewhat biblical, the ending, the last shot. What one of the interpretations, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yep. Um, Marjorie, what have you been watching? You know, she, she watches, uh, I'm not going to put her down for this, but she was put, uh, she watches my least favorite of the of the streaming services, Netflix. And on Netflix, uh, were you going yay yay? Yeah, man. Yeah, you watched that movie with Jennifer Lawrence in it. No, no I started watching it. I I want to finish it. It's not. But is it good? I thought it was pretty cute. Yeah. Um. But by cute, do you mean like Marjorie will sometimes say eh, it was cute? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I don't know whether she liked it or not, really. Not so deep, you know, but, you know, you're just like, OK, that was, you know, I didn't waste a complete two hours for nothing. It was entertaining. Oh, oh, OK, yeah. Well, we, we watched what was what was the name of that show? And it was out of uh, Sweden about some girl who uh, is is a, 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 this family, three person family, daughter, husband and wife, obviously. And the daughter is suddenly accused of murder. And it's like six episodes. I sat with her and watched this piece of crap. <laughs> like all six episodes. And I don't know why, because now I'm questioning my own personal sanity and the road that Marjorie is leading me down. <laughs> Wait a minute. Turn on your turn on your microphone, Marjorie. <laughs> I admit it was crap. <laughs> you you watch it in the nope. original Swedish. But the trouble with a lot of this Netflix stuff is you have to binge watch the whole thing to realize it's crap. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because a lot of times some things, you know, they seem like <clears throat> crap, but then they end up and they're pretty good, right? not these things they just be, <laughs> you know and then they're all they all seem to be the same movie i don't know why but there's yeah. a show called colin from accounts it's an australian show that's that's really entertaining is it on netflix it's, um, what's up anything maybe it's it's hulu or hulu or peacock i forget which oh oh I think yeah I, a, i'm uh i'm um I have a Zoom from four to five with my friends. Has has has? I would be delighted. Have you suddenly become I, invisible? I, <laughs> <I'm talking laughs> friend, I don't don't, don't you like how we're her friends? Her her friend. Oh, there she is. Oh, okay. there she I, is. I just wondered where you were. I heard your voice, but I my my phone rang and I and I answered it. That's where I was. Oh, oh, okay, that's fine. Oh. You were talking what, about what I what I wanted to what I I missed something but what I'm sure but um I wanted to mention that that I saw a decent movie on uh, on Netflix, it's called Rustin, it's about Bayard Rustin. Hello, Bayard Rustin. And it's it was well worth my time. Uh, it would be well worth anybody's time. It's about the uh, um the civil rights movement and and the actors do a really good job, and it's about it's about um. The, the organizing of of the uh, uh, um, of the march on Washington, right, right, and it was quite. It was David Rustin was gay. Yes, uh, so he, but he was responsible for an enormous amount of of why that was uh, uh, the success that it was, and we all remember it as a a big thing. Right. And he he actually created it and did did all the organizing and. Um, and, and then had to kind of bow out because not only was he homosexual, but they didn't call it gay then; they called it homosexual. And uh, but he also um, uh, ha had belonged to the Communist Party, so you know he was he was like persona non grata in a lot of places, and they didn't they didn't want anybody there to mess things up. But anyway, it was, it was very good. By the way, something that's bothering me, and I don't know if this is bothering you. But lately in his speeches, and I don't want to get political here. But there Donald, you are. No, but Donald, <laughs> <Here> we go. <laughs> Donald Trump brings up that Democrats, big left-wingers, are communists and Marxists. 
Yeah. And fascists. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but especially Marxists and communists. When do you remember anybody you know being a communist or a Marxist? Besides you? I mean, <laughs> oh, I'm an anarchist. Okay. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a fascist method. It's a technique to yeah. pull the pull the the yeah, force out but, of the words. But you know, I so thought that, yeah, bringing up the boogeyman. I think yeah. the, la the last communist alive in America lives in like a townhouse in Berkeley. You know, and that's about it. You know, the, these are terms that I haven't heard in. God, he's leaning 30. fascist. Hmm? So he's yeah. using this speech to. So you can't possibly call me that because that's what they are. It's 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 a very a, a, a but, very I, but old I just, technique I, for, for, I, for. I don't gaslighting. think. I don't think. In fact, I have heard the term Marxist in like twenty or thirty years. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah, am I yes. right, Charlie? I haven't either. I don't. He's just he, he's 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 gone back to the 1930s and the way Hitler was speaking. Uh, that's because he's an Berman. old man. You yeah. know, it could be, but I mean, I just you know the idea that he's getting people worried that people might be might be Marxist or communist. It's all <laughs> gaslighting, Alex. It's a. Yeah. It's I know, a, but it's weird. It's, it's just weird. Careful. It 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 is, but but it's a it's a way of it's it's how cults grow. Do half of his people know who what Marxists are? No, but it doesn't matter. No, it it doesn't. Doesn't. It's just a bad thing. No, but I just, it's just terms like that. I mean, that's a term that just, I haven't heard in, God, I don't know how long. You know, and I'm going, oh, yeah, well, I guess, uh, how do you know they're Marxists? It's, it's, it's insidious behavior on his back. And what was, what was the difference between a communist and a Marxist? Aren't they pretty much the same? Yes. Yeah. I mean, there aren't even communists left in Russia. Unless you're talking about Groucho. Yeah, <laughs> there aren't Marxists and communists left in Russia. Oh. <laughs> I don't understand it. it. Doesn't make any sense to me. But doesn't make any sense to me that somebody would buy that crap. But that's another story altogether. You know. Um, so let me see here. What else is happening? Uh, oh, did, I don't know if you talked about Sly. Did you guys talk about Sly at all? Sly? Oh, oh yeah, Sly on Netflix. Oh, the documentary on Sylvester Stallone. Very good. Oh, yeah, yeah, I liked it a lot. It, very good. You know, you sort of see the background of his stories, and you know, he explains about a lot of his his stuff going on in his life. You know, but yeah, but, yeah but, it's if, pretty interesting. If you never like Sylvester Stallone, you'll walk away from this thing liking him more. Yes, I agree. Mark Little. won't watch it because she can't stand him, but I told her <laughs> you should watch it. It's fascinating. It's things about right. you never knew. What, you, don't, you don't like Rocky? What, what, watch her yeah. That's because she's a communist and a Marxist. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, if you see the Rocky movies now, it looks so fake. It's really yeah. bad. But yeah. but yeah, but back then it was really cool. Yeah, it, it, yeah. yeah. Just like you said, Alex, I, I didn't care for him too much, and then uh, to watch that, I really came more. You have, more, a, you have a more of appreciation of him. Yes, definitely. Um, but it brought a lot of tourists to Philadelphia. That I can say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you to begin with, you really have to hand it to him because when he wrote Rocky, movie companies were jumping over each other for that script. But they didn't want him. Yeah. And he held out for the company that would let him play Rocky. And he agreed to play Rocky, I think, for nothing, right? And they got the script, and uh, the rest, of course, is history. And it was a good little movie, if you think about it. Oops, who do we just lose? We lost some. Oh, we lost Andrew. Who we lost? Yeah. No, Andrew's there. No, right Andrews here. is there. Who was who isn't here? I think it was Alex. Huh? Oh, uh, 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 we lost Alex. <laughs> no, I think it was someone. We did was lose it, uh, Charlene? Charlene? Charlene Solis. That's who we yeah. yeah, she was there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but anyway, so I mean uh it's it it is a very good documentary if people want to watch a good documentary. We also saw a good one which I had seen before, and I said to Marjorie, you should watch this. And we, so we both watched it again. 
And it's a documentary. It was on uh, Turner Classic Movies. Um, the documentary about Tab Hunter. Oh, wow. Yeah, which is an incredible very, documentary. Very, very good. Because... What he had to go through being gay in Hollywood at that time and hiding it, I... you know, and hiding it. Uh, Who is that again? No, Tab, Tab Hunter. Hunter. Who? Tab Hunter. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Sorry. Yeah. Tab Hunter. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and and he, um, uh, it's if you get to see it, it's uh, still available. I think on TCM on like their, you know, their app. Uh, is it's it, it's an incredibly good documentary because I like documentaries when you watch them, and after it's through, you go, you know, I really learned something out of this. I didn't think I was going to learn because the subject matter didn't appeal to me, and then you're so surprised on how good a documentary it is. I saw one today on William Friedkin, the director who died earlier this year, mm. which is on TCM, by the way. Is that the one that did The Exorcist? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He also did Cruisin' and uh, he did Sorcerer, which uh, some people consider one of the greatest movies oh. ever made, you know, but it just was a complete flop, you know. But he, uh, he did French, he did the French, French Convention, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and just listening to his philosophy about film and about how he did films uh, was uh, pretty good. You know, it was pretty terrific. Uh, so, you know. Uh, hello, Charlene. We lost you there for a while. But... Yeah, I got a phone call, and then I went to kick the phone call off, and I kicked myself off. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Don't you still feel like it's the holiday? Yeah. You kind of can't get over Thanksgiving. It has a lingering... Well, you can't get over it because it's turkey forever. But yes. It's down. Turkey for all this week. Yeah. How much traffic? How much, much traffic today? Turkey, do we have left, Marjorie? Uh, not that much. Oh, okay. You look tired. Who? You. I am. She got put up with you all day. <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't. She went out and she had a very nice lunch with her, uh, um, her boss, I guess, at the company that she no longer has to go to work at. Thank so. God. Yeah. Yes. And uh, he just, he, she didn't know why he wanted to take her out to lunch, you know, because I mean, she's only got a couple more months of getting paid and us getting the insurance and stuff like that. But he just wanted to have lunch with her. But she, uh, she went, oh, I don't know what it's about. And we're trying to figure out what it could be about, you know. And, uh, she talked into coming back. Huh? He just wanted to have <laughs> lunch with me, you know. Did you have nice lunch? Where'd you have lunch? It was great, but we went to one Italian restaurant, which was closed till dinner time, and there were about four or five other people that had reservations. Oh, jeez! How, how did they make reservations? Well, well, he had sent me an email saying that they only do dinner on Mondays, so yeah. we went to a Mexican restaurant that we had been to before. Very mm -hmm. good. Taco Bell's very good. Yeah. How are the bottomless <laughs> mimosas? Did he tell you he missed you, Marjorie? Bottomless yes. mimosas. I told you. <laughs> he wants you to come back to work. I don't want to go back to work. She's past her working days, you know. I am. Oh, and give me a break. This old broad is 80 now. <laughs> you know. She keeps saying, Oh, I just had my 80th birthday. And I'm thinking, yeah. I feel so sorry for you, young punk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I still can't get away from, you know, going out with younger women, you know, because you're like four years younger than me. No, I'm younger. What do you mean, four years? Well, it's younger than you. I'm saying you're four years younger than me. <laughs> and your point is? My point is? Hmm. <laughs> Doesn't look like it when I turn over in bed at night, but well, I'm trying to change the subject. Mandy unmuted, she wants to say something. Oh, yes, oh, Mandy. it's just this conversation made me think of tomorrow is my sister's 60th birthday, and that's just so wild to me because my sister, like, that was my you know, she's like my OG best friend, my original best friend, you know, yeah, yeah, right. 
I can't wrap my brain around she's going to be 60 years old. Not that that's old. Where, uh, how old are you? Did you say 67? Uh, no. 57. 57. Come on. 57. <laughs> right. So I'm right behind her, but it's just so crazy to think she's going to be 60. It's just Beer. Yeah, it, it, it all these, uh, you know, what gets worse as you get older, and this is really terrible, is the people who start dying. My mom says that. My mom yeah. says, that. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, uh, you hear about somebody dying, and then I find out he was a little bit older than I am, you know, <laughs> he died anyway, you know, but uh, I, 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 I'm. As I told somebody, you know, I just, just the horrible part about getting older is all the people that die around you, you know, whether it's a star or, you know, recording artist or whether it's a friend, you know, and you go, wow. I think you should talk about politics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right, Paula. We should talk about <laughs> politics, you know, uh, but it's it's just uh, it, it it's 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 not easy getting older it really isn't you know and uh, uh everybody uh, uh, around you doesn't make it any easier you know with because i still hear you know i still hear comics that i like who are all doing old jokes you know mm -hmm. uh, you know and uh i mean i like john oliver but occasionally he will do an old joke bill maher does them all the time all the time you know. The last time I saw George Carlin live, he was doing grandfather jokes, and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. I love George Carlin. I went to go see him. Oh, my God, I loved him so much. Yeah, he was great. He was great. I was never, oddly enough, for, for years, I was never a big fan. And then in the aftermath of him, I became a fan. Hmm. Uh, but I did interview him at a Jewish community center in Marin County. Oh, wow. Because they had an evening with George Carlin, and they asked me to interview him. And it was a very pleasant experience. Very pleasant experience. Wow. He has, it, the sad, sad part, his wife had died recently. Not just died, but recently. And um, he supposedly was never the same after she died. But he was still, you know, he was, it was still a very interesting conversation. But I never interviewed him on the radio. But I interviewed him at the Jewish Community Center. So, uh, and uh, anybody know the uh, well? None of you are out in California. Well, I am. I'm uh, California. Oh, well, yeah, uh, two of you. You know the Jew. You know the old the uh, um, uh, Marine County Civic Center that was done by the Frank Lloyd Wright. It's right mm -hmm. here, there, the Jewish Community Center. And they built this huge. Jewish Community Center. Now, when I was a kid, I went to the Jewish Community Center, and what it was was a house they bought in San Rafael. <laughs> and that was the Jewish Community Center. And they built a little extra thing onto it to do services and things like that. But basically, that was the Jewish Community Center. All of a sudden, they said, well, come on out to the Jewish Community Center out in, you know, out in, I can't remember what the area is called. And I went out there. And I, it's this huge, giant place. And I'm going, God, did this many Jews move into Marin County? You know, <laughs> but because there were only something like, at least when we had a Jewish community center, I think there were only about 100 families that went there. So, you know, I was still growing up being called that dirty Jew. Anyway, <laughs> so, but, uh, um, you know, I mean, it, it, um, well, I have nothing more to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> we've talked about Turkey. We've talked about, you know, and since we don't talk about politics on this show, I don't want to even get into what's happening. No, no, don't. Elsewhere in the world. Um, because it's, a, but, but uh, I, I did, you know, the thing that did get me was that documentary on, uh, at, on, uh, Real sports with Brian Gumble about Ukrainian sports people. Yeah. Uh, they have no place to train. They've all been bombed. And they specifically bomb these places. They, uh, uh, they've made it a, a, a part of their attack scheme to get these like gymnasiums and sports arenas 
and things like that. And it, I'm, sure you've, I'm sure you've seen the footage from over there. Everything is friggin' ruined. I yeah. mean, it's a mess over there. <laughs> well, it's not as ruined near Kiev and uh, that part of the country. Well, they hit Kiev this week. They hit Kiev this week. But, you know. I mean, I don't, you know, I saw, and I, again, I'm not getting political here, but you see yes, you the, 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 the videos of Gaza, and I'm wondering, they keep bombing, but what's left to bomb? Right. You know, there's nothing left there so far as I can see. But then again, you know, the trouble is, I'll tell you the trouble with the news on TV, is a camera is only capable of shooting like this. So you don't see what's here, and you don't see what's over here. So when they shoot rubble in a war zone like Ukraine, for example, you're only seeing this. You're not seeing either side of it. You're not seeing how truly bad the devastation is. It may be worse than it looks, but you don't get the full picture. On the other hand, you may get the other sides and you see, well, this is where the bombs landed, but this is what they're going to shoot. So that's what you're going to see. And that's going to be your lasting perception of the of the desolation but i mean when i see some of this bombing like in ukraine or in in gaza for instance i don't know what's left you know yeah and sometimes it's hard to vi have vision of what it looked like before so sometimes you see the before and after pictures and you just go wow you know this is a nice place to live and walk around touristy and stuff like that and then to see it devastated is crazy well, you know, I mean, uh, what's his name? Uh, Shecky went to, uh, where was the place where the steps were in in Battleship Potemkin, the silent film by Eisenstein? Uh, and it's one of those towns they totally bombed completely. But I think they did miss those steps. I think they did, decided not to bomb them specifically. Uh, but I mean, it's just terrible. It's just terrible. You know, I'm just hoping that maybe... In the next year, the world gets some sense in their head and things change. And life can be more beautiful for everybody around the world. I mean, we're very lucky here because really all we've got here are, uh, well, I guess I can say it to this group, Republicans. That's all we've got here as, as, yeah. as an omnipresent danger. But you think about what's going on elsewhere in the world. You know, I don't even know. I want to travel, go to Europe. I'm afraid to travel to Europe. Yeah. You know, uh, so whatever. You They're know. afraid to come here. Hey, listen, every every year, <laughs> every, well, listen, every year we go up to every cup. We used to go up every year to a place called Burlington, Vermont, which, you know, if you've ever been to Bur Burlington, Vermont, this is as taffy as you can get in the United States. This is just nice and sweet and wonderful and so on. They had this attack of three Palestinians up there. Yeah. Burlington, Vermont. I mean, you know, the home of Ben and Jerry's. Right? <laughs> you know, so you begin to wonder where you can go now. You know, so I just don't go out at all. And uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've forgotten how I've forgotten how to drive, but I've also forgotten now how to walk. I think that's the other thing that I forgot. Because yeah, you don't go out walking. Huh? Because <laughs> you don't go out to walk. Well, where's there to walk to? Hey, just walk a block. That's more than you're doing now. Yeah. Wait a minute. Who? Where is there to walk to in New York City? Are you kidding? Well, you, <laughs> well, if you're here visiting, there are places to walk to. If you've lived here for a long time. It's just what's concrete out there. What do I want to go out there for? Also, I have we have a big enough apartment here. There's no need to go out. You know, we were we were Marjorie and I were stuck in here for all of COVID, and never got at each other's throats because if we wanted to ignore the other one, we just went into another room. You know, we're lucky that way. But man, if we still live downtown, Marjorie, I would have killed you by now. Or you would have killed me. Can you imagine spending COVID in that apartment? You know, so. Anyway, uh, it looks like time has is running out here. I I really love this. Who just left? <laughs> Andrew? That time it was. Yeah. Andrew. That's Andrew. Oh, Andrew. It was a great game to play. Who left? 
Who who a new game? Who just left? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, thank thank you very much, Andrew, for joining us today because you're really a lot of fun, Marjorie. So are you, darling. I love you dearly. I don't I don't say that on this program, do I? No, no. not enough. Just leave it like <laughs> that. Do. Oh, geez. Just leave it like that. I got have two mothers now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Live with it. <laughs> Paula, mm -hmm. always lovely having you here. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, Len? What, what no kiss? kiss? Huh? <laughs> what? I don't get a kiss too? What? Okay. <laughs> Mandy? Hi. <laughs> I'll give Mandy a kiss goodbye too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll, give, uh, I'll give all the guys a kiss too. Stand by, Brian. It's going to be a wet one. Uh, <laughs> Charlie. Goodbye, Charlie. Uh, it, goodbye, uh, Charlene. Nice to meet you. And Brian? <laughs> As people are walking by looking for an empty room to work in. <laughs> Anyway, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you all next week, okay? Bye-bye. Thanks, Alex. Bye. 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 Bye.